Good evening. Uh, today I want to look at the most important subject. We ask ourselves questions after we have missed a point of death or after a point where we thought our life was nearly taken away. And we ask God, why did you save me? Why am I born? Why me? Why this? Why that? And, and today I just want us to look at that and understand why did God form a human being? Why did God come to your conclusion that he's going, he needs a, a person like you and a person like me? And uh, it all starts in the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And I'm reading from the Holy Bible, um, verse 26. Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make men in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the beds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, that is the intention that God had. And now, if you go again to the same book, Genesis um, 2, and you start from verse 7, and then it, it confirms that indeed um, the Lord God formed man from dust, and of the ground, and, and he breathed into his nostrils um, life, and the man became a living being, and God planted him in the uh, Garden of Eden, and we know what happened from there. But uh, basically, when I read this scripture, I realize that God said, let's create somebody that will resemble us on the face of the earth, somebody that will take charge of the earth. So we form the earth and then we take the earth and we hand it over to this human being and this human being is meant to to resemble us now we understand that that is the position of authority it is a position of power and child of god i want you to do a self introspection and see yourself that are you representing god are you at a point where you can say in the likeness of of himself he formed me and as a result I am playing that role at this point where I am resembling him at every level of my life let me tell you something God didn't save you from that accident from the witchcraft from from all the the humiliation he didn't take you through all the struggles so that you can be average he didn't take you through all the pain so that you can be normal God God didn't intend you that you should go through all the, the, the highs and lows so that you can come and cry like a baby. God created you so that you can resemble him. And let me tell you, in your journey, God was trying to train you. You didn't go through that in-depth poverty so that you can become average. A lot of stuff that we went through it, it, it forbids us to be normal, to be average, to be a mere person. Let me tell you, I was talking to, uh, and, uh, uh, way back when I was still in the transport business, I was talking to some of the kids that I was transporting. They were in a private school. And I said, when you go to a private school, there are certain jobs that you can you no longer qualify for. But a mere virtue of you going to a private school, you then move yourself and you start at a certain level. Because why? You have gone to a higher education. Therefore, for why would you go and demand a higher education so that you can come and be normal? Why would you go and demand a higher knowledge so that you can come and become normal? Let me tell you, you need to identify yourself with God. I will give you another example. Now, as parents, we have kids, and I want us to learn from this example so that we can understand and have a, a view. It won't be enough to understand how God sees us, but I think it will give us an idea. Now, when you have a child, 
You carry this child for nine months. You, 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 you nurture this child and then you train this child to, to live in this world with confidence, with courage, with, with, with boldness. And now as you're training this child, there is a certain level of tolerance that, that you have towards this child. Why? Because you know the ability and the capability of this child. Why? Because it's your child. Now, when the child becomes a cry baby you then know that this is a time where you need to step up and lift them up a bit and say don't be a cry baby you need to man up you need to stand up you need to be strong because this world is not for the for, 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 for the crying babies this world is for the bold is for the brave now child of God let's come back to the scripture God says let's make men in our image now, let's not make men that will be apologetic. Let's not make men that will, be, will, will ask for permission every step of the way. Let's make a man who will first seek my face. And after he knows who I am, he will go on and resemble me. Now we have faced, we are faced with a predicament here where we are, we, 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 a lot of diseases, a lot of uh, craziness, uh, mediocre, we are allowing simply because we cannot identify with God. We allow the next person to destroy what God has created. Why? Because we haven't come to identify with God. And today I want to remind you that you are God-like. You are supposed to resemble God. And if that is the case, then you need to ask yourself, are you resembling God? Have you taken your position of leadership? Have you come to a point where you say, God, here am I and I want to resemble you? We have allowed the, 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 the guys that preach this gospel out of empty stomachs because they are, they are hungry and they're taking advantage of God's children to mislead the sheep even further. And I want you to know that this is a call for you to come to a point where you're saying, have I been resembling God? And I think that is the highest error that you can ever commit to be created in God's image and begin to perform like a, something I don't even know what. Let me give you another example. It is, it is incorrect. It is an error for a Ferrari to perform like a Tez. I've said it. It is incorrect for a car that is built with such supernatural powers to behave and, and perform like a mere car that was taken six months in, in production and it's already out. Today, I want you to ask yourself one question. Who are you resembling? Who are you resembling? God saved you from poverty. God saved you from, 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 from lions, from bears, from, from all sorts of pains. Not so that you can become an average person. In whatever thing that you try to do, do it with all your mind. Give it your best. It's, it's either you do it or it's not worth doing. Now, I can tell you, if you don't know what you carry, the potential that you carry, then you won't know what you need to be. I am, um, I love soccer, and I'll give you an example with soccer. Now, if you are a father and you encourage your child, your son to participate in, in, in the sports, uh, soccer. And now you know there are rules. You know there are, there are conditions, there are, there are principles, there are things that you need to obey. There, is, there, is, there are requirements that must be met for your son to end up playing soccer. The kid, the attitude, the rules of play. Now, you, you, you know there is a coach. 
And now you allow your son to get into the, 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 the field of soccer. Soccer field is like this life. And when you are, when, when, when your child is playing, they, they, they make sure the first thing that they understand the rules. You can't touch the soccer with the hands. The ball, you can't touch it with your hands. You, 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 you can't play um, by, by grabbing the next player. They, 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 they get associated with the rules. And at a point where they understand the rules, then they, they need to know how to play. The coach is there. He gives them instruction. This is how you need to play. Now they get into the soccer field. They invite daddy. Daddy, come watch us play. Today we have a soccer game. Come watch us play. Mommy, come watch us play. And mommy and daddy, they come to the fields and they watch you play. They watch the child play. Now, there comes a moment where the opponents, they, they kick you. And, 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 and for as long as the, 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 the official, the match official hasn't blown, daddy cannot run into the field. Mommy cannot run into the field and rescue you. You need to get up. In fact, when your child is kicked and is lying there crying, oh, I'm in pain. What do you shout from the touchline is, get up, my son. You can do it. Get up, my son. You can do it. That is the message that you're sending out there to your son. Get up, my son. You can do it. You can score, run. You don't say, yeah, my son, you're tired, sit down. You don't say, my, my son, you've been kicked, cry. You encourage your son, your child to be bold, to be brave, to be strong. You want your son to last the entire game. And let me tell you something about soccer. When you are kicked and you are carried outside the field, the game doesn't stop. The game continues. Doesn't that sound more like this life that we live? When you are sick, the life doesn't stop. It continues. When you are, you are sitting there lying on your, 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 your hospital bed, life continues. All you need is to recover very fast and run into the field of play and run into this life and, and be courageous and be brave. A lot of, 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 of soccer players, and, and I, I'm referring to you, child of God, you are stuck into your previous games, your previous losses. You don't need to reflect into your losses. You need to look into the future and see the strength that you possess. Why? Because you are made in God's image. What would God do in this situation? God wouldn't sit down and cry. God will be hopeful of tomorrow. If I am made in the image of God, I would not cry. I would get up strong. I would get up with bravery courageous and face this life. Oftentimes, we, we cry like kids in the field of play and, and even they perform even better because you, you, you're standing there in this life and you, 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 all you're holding on is prayer. You're praying uh, day in and day out. You're thinking God created you to come to earth to pray to him? Let's look at David when he attacked um, the bears and the sheep. We, we, there is no record of David having to run back to his father and say, Father, I saw a bear is about to devour the sheep. What do I do of it? How should I handle it? Let me tell you, if that would have happened, by the time David would have got an instruction from the father and he ran back to the field, the sheep would have been devoured completely. 
Most of us, we behave that way. We think our relationship with God is, 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 is caressed around prayer. We think we look good when we pray and God is asking you, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're supposed to be carrying the ball. You're supposed to be running with the ball. You're supposed to be scoring goals. You're not supposed to be looking to the touchline and looking at your mommy and daddy. God is like our mommy and daddy. The sooner we understand that we need to understand that he gave us the power. He gave us the breath. That is a confirmation enough that we need to run and score as many goals as possible. You can't play soccer by, by going to your coach every time. Coach, I have the ball. What do I do? Coach, I have the ball. Do I score? Coach, he has the ball. Do I tackle him? Stop it, child of God. Stop, stop letting the, the desperate a man who don't understand this book mislead you. It is the time that you take charge. It is that time where you set goals. And you say, in the next six months, I want to be this person. I want to achieve this. You need to score those goals. Some of us, when we look back six months versus today, there's no difference. You haven't scored a goal, child of God. Your 90 minutes is coming to an end. You haven't even hit the goalpost, child of God. I know I'm comparing this with soccer. You can link it to rugby. You can link it to any other sport. You know that when you are in there, you need to take charge. You need to resemble God. You need to be God-like. Have you been God-like? Are you a crybaby? Every time life threatens you, you run to prayer. God didn't create you to pray. There is no scripture where I read and God says, let's create man so that he can pray. And we're thinking that's cute. We're thinking that's what God wants. God doesn't want that. He wants you to resemble him. He wants you to be like him. Every challenge that you come across, you need to take it with bravery. You need to take it and approach it with boldness. When you know yourself, you will know what you need to do. Child of God, I hope this touches you one way or the other. I hope after this you ask yourself questions. Have you been God-like or have you been holding yourself on prayer? Pastors have even encouraged you to pray harder. You haven't been praying harder. You haven't been praying harder. It is not about prayer. You already have the strength in you. Rise up. Rise up and be decisive. Rise up and know what to do. Else, men will come and say, let's go to the east. God said we must go to the east and you will go to the east. And they will find you in the east. Others will say, God said, let's go to the north. You'll go to the north. And at the end of it, your strength will be worn out. And when God asks you, what have you done? You will say, but God, this man came and that man came. And God will say, I didn't create you in consultation with those men. I created you alone and I gave you a clear instruction. 
Today you know that you need to resemble God. Go out there and resemble God and be God-like. May God bless you in everything that you do. Amen.